Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about PFSense, Let's Encrypt, HA Proxy, and Wildcard Certificates. And the goal of this video is to be able to show you how you can take private servers that you do not want publicly exposed, but servers that you have, like let's going to use FreeNAS as an example in this particular demo, but you don't want to deal with the self-signed certificate error. And I'm going to walk you through how to do that with PFSense, HA Proxy, and Wildcard Certificates. So if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you want to support the channel out in other ways, there are discount links below, affiliate links to get you discounts and deals on products and services that we talk about on this channel. So wild card certificates. If you came here just wondering how to do them versus a normal certificate, uh, this is really, really easy. You just put Instead of the domain, you put star.example.com. Now I'll leave a link below because I did in my first video on HA proxy with PFSense and certificates, I showed how you can create specific domains with public entries. For example, we did in the demo as Azkaban and Nova Prospect it points to a public IP address and we tied HA proxy to the WAN and then created rules to make it publicly exposed. I'll link to that video. But a lot of times, and this is something we do inside of our network, we have private servers we do not want publicly exposed, but we also don't want SSL errors. So if you don't want to deal with the certificate error and you don't want to publicly expose them, that's what this video is for. So let's start here. And one of the prerequisites is, as it actually says here, well, there's a couple of prerequisites. Let's run through them. You have to be able to do DNS-based method for Let's Encrypt to hand you a wildcard certificate. So there's a long list of providers that can host DNS. I'm particularly using DigitalOcean because they offer this. If you have your domains DNS hosted with DigitalOcean. You can use the API key and the API key allows you to do the challenge response. The other methods are not available besides DNS to get a wildcard cert. You can only do individual search for individual domains. So that's an important prerequisite that you have a company that supports it or have the ability to do it manually. Downside about doing it manually, and this is what a manual challenge looks like, where you do Acme challenge and then the domain. Um, you can do it that way, but you have to manually keep changing the value in the TXT record. So not the ideal way to do it in case you're wondering. Ideally, you really want to find a provider that has an API key available, and there's a very long list inside of PFSense uh, that are supported. Also, it only works for the first domain. So star.example.com, as they talk about here, if you have subzones, star dot some subzone dot your domain dot com, uh, you have to do it for each one of the subzones. So you we can do wildcard, but it won't work for subzones. They each subzone needs to have its own wildcard. So not too difficult. Let's talk about what that looks like in practice. Another prerequisite before we get to the actual part inside the system in Acme and HA proxy is that you have changed the defaults in PFSense to not be port 443. The web control of PFSense out, out of the box default config is to attach to port 443. We want the LAN IP of PFSense because we want to keep this private, not on the WAN, but on the LAN. We need that to not have the same as the web control. So what we did was we moved this for the web configuration to 10443 then web GUI redirect. And what this does is takes port 80 if you hit it on the local IP of the system and redirects it out to uh, port whatever the TCP port is set, default being 443. But by moving these and disabling the uh, web GUI, this will solve some troubleshooting that uh, you may have when you're setting this up because we want it to, def to tie to port 443. So we can simply type in HTTPS, the domain we're trying to get to and have it land on the server that we want. You can, of course, modify this at will and change all the ports and not use port 443 and solve the problem that way too. But for simplistic sake and for the sake of this particular video, this is how we're doing it. Now, let's give you a quick lay of the land on how things are set up. The goal is purple NAS right here goes to HTTPS 192.168.1.8, but it's a self-signed search, so we get the error. At home, I have this NetGate SG1100 and it goes out to the internet. The NetGate SG1100 is 192.168.1.1. So pretty straightforward that I have a 1.8 and a 1.1, but I don't want the world, and I don't think it's a good idea to do this, to just expose the web interface to my FreeNAS, but I also don't want, you know, to uh, click through the self-signed certificate error each time. So let's talk about how that works. Now I am remoted in currently to a computer 
at my off at my house where I have this set up where we're doing the demo. I'm doing recording at my office and doing it there. And of course, if I just go to 192.168.11, I get not secure, certificate invalid. Uh, so obviously that is the first problem. I got to click, you know, proceed to safety, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll bring me to the login for my free NAS. All right. So let's work out how we're going to fix that. And I would say the first step is getting your cert set up. So pretty easy to set up an account key. I have one set up. That's part really straightforward when you uh, set up an account key with the Acme. So I load the Acme plugin. I have HE proxy plug plugin loaded. Obviously both two prerequisites you need and having PF sense configured. Then we go over here and this is just a free account key. I'm not going to expose it because it shows your private key when I click on this, but you set up a account key. That's free. Then we're going to go over here to certificates. And these are all the ones from the last demo, which I'll refer back to that video as well. But the wildcard one is really easy to do. Go over here to the wildcard. I use the Acme account home cert, private key 128. I just called it wildcarddetroitutilcompany.com, wildcard cert for Detroit Utiland Company. And instead of putting the domain like I did in other ones like purplenass.detroitutilcompany.com, we put in just an asterisk.detroitutilcompany.com. And I'm not going to expose it, but this is the API key for DigitalOcean. And like I said, there's a ton of places that support DNS. So whoever your DNS provider is, whatever the API key you need from them is, but you can do this. Uh, Lino to support DigitalOcean. By the way, I do have an offer code for DigitalOcean if you'd like to use them as well. Uh, gets you some uh, credits and hooks us up with you know some credits as well. All right. Now, just like the other ones, uh, I have it set up here because we're going to be using HA proxy. And what this does is an action list because these certs expire every 90 days and they renew before they expire. But when they renew, you have to make sure you restart the services that depend on them. So that still applies here. We're going to be using HA proxy for this demo. So I just threw in the script that says, hey, whenever this cert renews, go ahead and restart the HA proxy service. So it grabs the latest cert. And of course, in the general settings, we have the cron entry. Then we go over here to HA proxy. Then we'll leave this one here. This is the one where we were tying it to the public side of it. So this time we're going to create another entry in HA proxy for the private side. So first we start with the back end. Type add. This will be called free NAS. And for reference, 192.168.1.8. Oops, I typed that in the wrong spot. We'll call this free. That was called free NAS lowercase. Free NAS. We can ignore everything down here. Port 443, because we want it to connect to the encrypted port on there. It doesn't have to. It can get to an unencrypted port. It will be encrypted on the front end, but the back end, depending on how it's going. And I covered that in the last video. So we are going to check it, say, yes, it's SNL encrypted, but we already know it's a self-signed search. We're just not going to bother with any check right there. So that's it. That's all we have to do. Free NAS, address, port. All right. Don't worry about any of these. I don't care about a health check on there. I'll leave that up to you. I usually turn it off so I don't need any messages from it. I'm not worried about agent checking. Everything else is just default. So save. I don't really need to click apply right now because I need to go create a front end for this and then we'll click apply. So on the front end, Remember, I want these to be private. So I want them tied to the LAN address at 443 SSL offloading because we want this to take the SSL and handle it for us. And we're going to go here and we'll call it private servers because we're going to do more than one. I mean, I could do one and call it free NAS, uh, but I plan to attach more than one for part of this demo. So private, uh, a home private servers. How's that? Home private servers. All right. So now we have LAN there, advanced, great. HTTPS offloading, no problem there. Now we're going to do this with ACLs because we're going to add more than one to this. So we'll go here and we'll say name. What are we going to call this? Well, FreeNAS seems like a good name. Go here. Post matches free NAS dot Detroit Yodeling Company dot com. So free NAS dot Detroit Yodeling Company dot com. So when the host matches that, we're going to create an action here and I'll copy this now. Go here, use backend free NAS, and this is the ACL name. So we create an ACL rule here that says free NAS, and if it matches free NAS dot Detroit Yodeling Company com, that's the server. Uh, 
SNI, that's what the browser sends, use this ACL and use this back end. Let me scroll down here. And this is a pretty simple part. We got to make sure we don't skip over that I skipped over, I think, in the last video. Was making sure you choose the right certificate. So it's really easy. We're just going to choose wildcard as a certificate. So wildcard.detroityieldingcompany.com. And it has a default checked here, but you don't really have to do anything with it. And you make sure that it's going to use the wildcard cert. So everything that goes under this particular rule will always be pulling the same cert. In my last video, I talked about having to match the cert and match the SNI. Well, because we're using a wildcard, you don't really need to anymore. Hit save. Now we can apply. So we've tied 192.168.1443 to here. But that domain name doesn't exist. freenas.detroityodelingcompany.com. It's not in our list here, and we don't need to because we want this to be private, so we don't really need to create a public IP entry for this. We're going to go over here to Services, and we're going to go to DNS Resolver. And what we do here now is create it. So inside the network, provided the system is using PFSense as its DNS. So whatever your DNS server is, if you have a Windows domain network, it's usually your Windows domain server. You'll have to add a host entry. But if you're just doing this at home and you don't have a Windows domain, easy enough to just do this. So it's free NAS here, TroyOdlingCompany.com here, and IP address is 192.168.1.1. Free NAS server. Save. Apply. Now what this is going to do is create a DNS entry that only exists inside the network that is going to be using PFSense as its DNS. So we're using PFSense as DNS, freenas.detroityoungcoming.com equals 192.168.11. And it's going to hand over the wildcard SSL and then make a connection to FreeNAS so we get rid of the certificate error. So let's go back over to the computer at my house. We see this one has the error. We're going to go here, HTTPS colon slash slash freenas.detroityieldingcompany.com. And now we have a self-signed cert. And away we go. Certificate's valid. But let me just show you if you're here at my office. So this is on my computer. And if we do a dig, and we'll do a public dig. So we'll dig at uh, Google's, IP, Google's IP address because I'm at office. So... They go up 28, 8.8.8. .8 it just doesn't exist. But if you do that same command, I'm VPN to my house, but my house is not my DNS server. But if we ask 1.1, which is the DNS server for my house where this demo is happening, it answers the free NAS at Detroit equals 192.168.11 which makes it work inside the network, but not outside. Now, if someone were to VPN in, uh, you would also have to make sure that they had those uh, DNS records. So if I wanted this to work here at my office, I'd have to either create matching records or another option. And this is what I wanted to talk about as well. So if you want another server, but you let's say you have remote workers and those remote workers, you want to be able to VPN them in so they have access to resources, but not have to, you know, add a bunch of host entries to each individual worker. That's actually pretty easy to do. So we're going to go over here and look at the DigitalOcean setup. And I have gibberish.detroityodelingcompany.com, and it points to 192.168.11. So we're going to take this DNS gibberish. We'll just dig right here at my office if we do dig. And we'll do it uh, just choosing a different DNS server. So 111 Cloudflare's DNS server instead of even my own. But we see there's an entry. So there's a public entry, and you can even do this in your computer. If you look up gibberish.detroityodelingcompany.com, it doesn't go anywhere for you unless you have access. Well, interestingly, if you have something at 192.168.11, it'll respond. So you can do this. So what I've done is I've created a public DNS entry to redirect to a local IP address. So if I have a remote user, that user now can use this, even if it doesn't matter if they're using PFSense or not, because the DNS records are public, but they point to local IP. So in a VPN, in, they can get to different resources. So let's go over here into HA proxy again and create another ACL rule. So these are our home private servers. So we'll edit it. Called gibberish. 
host starts with, host matches, gibberish.detroitutilitycompany.com. Now I'm going to use an existing backend that I have set up. So I think you kind of get the idea of how to set a backend up. I have this other one called Nova Prospect. That's what we used in my last demo. Use backend, gibberish, gibberish, as, as long as they match. And I don't have to do anything with certificate because it's going to hand out the same wildcard cert no matter what. So that certificate that we chose down here, one and the same. So we take this same one, point it at here, save, apply, go back over to the computer here, https gibberish.detroitutilitycompany.com, and it lands on a Nova Prospect server. All right, now because I am VPNed in, let me open up a tab on my browser, not the remote one here. So if we go to gibberish.joyolincoming.com, it is 1.1 because I'm VPNed in, I can get to it, works perfectly fine. So it's really that simple for taking and putting your resources so you don't have to deal with self-signed cert errors. And if you look at the certificate I get, it is DetroitYodelingCompany.com is the CN name for this, and it's asterisk, which means whatever it is, .DetroitYodelingCompany.com, it's valid. So this is how you do wildcard search. This is a really simple way. So even if you have remote people, um, as long as you have entries. Now, like I said, the important part is that um, you're tying all this to the LAN, and then there's no rules needed for this except that they have to be able to, and I, I chose LAN, they have to be able to get to that resource. In the instance, and an example might be how we have our office set up, we have multiple LAN IP addresses because we've segmented out our network. You still have to choose whichever segment of the network that you want. So in this case, like I said, it's 192.168.11, but if it was 3.1 or 10.1 or whatever it is in your particular network, you do base your rules on who can access that. If you wanted to control who can access the servers, you would want to make sure you create rules around that. Now, HA Proxy also has specific rules that can be created within here. So you can either create some of the rules in here for like how host matches. And by saying that, I mean, you can actually break down certain custom APL, regex, et cetera, uh, on this side. But you can also, when you're creating a firewall rules, what you don't need to do is have any type of firewall rules on the WAN side, because all of this is 100% behind your firewall and kept private. And the final little note is the servers themselves, the private servers that you're attaching to, each one of these servers listed in the back end, for example, FreeNAS and Nova Prospect. If you go through the logs of any of these particular servers, they see the connection not coming from my IP address of my computer, but they always see the connection coming from PFSense because PFSense is basically offloading the connections. So your computer connects to PFSense and then PFSense redirects uh, to the servers. We bring up the little map here, for example, and even though we're on the LAN, we can just duplicate this real quick. So even though my computer, which actually has an IP address, if we said, you know, uh, Tom's computer, and even though I'm remote because I'm VPN in, which my computer is 3.9, whenever I attach to these, I'm attaching from here to here, but they don't see my 3.9. They see the IP address of the PFSense and then connects over to here. So when you're doing some troubleshooting, I bring this up because sometimes it can create some confusion because all of your systems that are... Uh, handle through that back end will all show logs as PFSense logging in, not necessarily the IP address, either private or public, whether they came from the internet or here and how they land on the servers. But it's a pretty straightforward setup on here. Um, and obviously, as I shown, you can even mix and match here. You can have the parts of your servers you want public and then all of your private servers attached to whichever LAN or, you know, specifically however you want to attach them. Uh, but this saves you all the trouble that you can have of dealing with all those self-signed certificates or in some cases in some tools and I'll bring up one of them that we use that we have we don't want publicly exposed but we have to have a valid SSL for is Bitwarden. So I'm able to using the same process this is how we're able to have Bitwarden self-hosted not publicly exposed anywhere only accessed via VPN or vi via physically being in my office but at the same time have a valid cert that we don't have to 
uh, have any errors with or do any click throughs, which breaks a lot of other things when you have a self signed cert. Um, and it's, you know, gets annoying having to click continue every time you try to log into something because going to, you know, each server and going like this, well, it can be a problem. It says not secure because I've already clicked it, but obviously, certificate so invalid, eventually it times out and Chrome gives the error. So hopefully, this was a pretty simple to follow and makes sense. Uh, it's pretty straightforward for getting it set up. If you want a little bit more and I go a little bit more in depth in HA proxy, follow my other video. But for the basics of getting your servers so they all wrap through HA proxy and don't have the cert error, this video was kind of gets to it pretty simple. The last thing I will comment this is an SG 1100, and someone had asked me how much it can handle. It's handling this perfectly fine. So it's doing pretty well with this in terms of uh, power. But I will admit, if you do this at scale, if you wanted to do this at a business and have a lot of people connecting, not just a handful of your private servers that you manage, you're probably going to want something more than an SGN 1100 to do this. But it will handle, at least for home users, uh, quite a bit. Uh, this HA proxy and everything else, it works quite well on this. So here's the memory usage on my SG 1100. And you can see... Uh, it's not using much. So this little two core system, no problem handling HA proxy. Or uh, because I'm on this page, it actually the CPU use is showing a little bit higher, but memory usage is about 32% right now. This usage is pretty low. And just so you know what else I'm running on here, I am also running uh, PF blocker and uh, SSH, OpenVPN, the Zabbix agent, and of course HA proxy. So with all of these running. We, we still are only using a little bit more than a quarter of the one gig of RAM available on here. So it does not take a ton to uh, keep this up and running and working. But uh, nonetheless, if you want to do this at scale, you will need something a little bit faster, uh, either one of the higher end NetGate devices or, you know, a DIY solution, whatever it is. You'll have to scale that up and figure that out as you as you scale up the project. All right. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.